In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings, God's good people. Today is Wednesday, the 5th of August, 2020. The Church celebrates the dedication of the Basilica of St. Mary Major. You are listening to Catholic Meditation with me, Father Blessed Amba Njume. Thanks for joining us. Let us pray. Pardon the faults of your servants, we pray, O Lord, that we who cannot please you by our own deeds may be saved through the intercession of the mother of your son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 1 to 7. The Gospel from St. Matthew, chapter 15, verses 21 to 28. I read from the first reading. At that time, declares the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they will be my people. This is what the Lord says. The people who survive the sword will find favor in the wilderness. I will come to give rest to Israel. The Lord appeared to us in the past, saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with an unfailing kindness. I will build you up again, and you, virgin Israel, will be rebuilt. Again, you will take up your timbrels and go out to dance with the joyful. Again, you will plant vineyards on the hills of Samaria. The farmers will plant them and enjoy their fruit. There will be a day when watchmen cry out on the hills of Ephraim, Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. This is what the Lord says. Sing with joy for Jacob. Shout for the foremost of the nations. Make your praises heard and say, Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
return to God and be rebuilt. Return to God and be rebuilt. Today, dearest in Christ, we celebrate the feast in memory of the dedication of the Basilica of St. Mary Major. It is one of the four major basilicas in Rome and the largest Catholic Marian basilica in Rome. In the basilica is the venerated image of Salus Popoli Romani, depicting the Blessed Virgin Mary as the help and protectress of the Roman people. If you recall, for those who were opportuned to see it, the Holy Father, Pope Francis, visited this basilica at the height of the coronavirus pandemic, especially when the death toll was skyrocketing in Italy daily. He went in and prayed to Mary, our Blessed Mother, seeking her protection and intercession. It was Pope Gregory XVI who granted canonical coronation of this basilica with that title on the 15th of August, 1838. But the church was long built as far back as the year 432. However, undergoing continuous modification and interior decoration over the years. The church was built firstly in Mary's honor after the Council of Ephesus in the year 431, which pro proclaimed Mary as Mother of God. The Basilica was built to commemorate and immortalize this decision. Secondly, it was built to recognize Mary's maternal role in the life of the Church. Mary is Mother of God. She is also Mother of the Church. In today's first reading, the prophet Jeremiah brings a message of hope to the people of Israel. This message meets them in a time of sorrow and distress, still suffering the effects of the Babylonian exile. The prophet brings a message of hope and consolation from God. Again, I will restore you and you shall be rebuilt. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 4. The people will return to Jerusalem and they will be restored. Things will return to normal and they will continue to do the things they used to do before. They shall plant vineyards and enjoy the fruits. They shall carry out their activities as before, festive tambourines and merrymaking. They shall return to God's love. Dear friends, like Jerusalem and like the people of Israel, we too have been exiled from God and kept away from Him by our sins. Our sins have enslaved us. We have lost our glory as sons and daughters of God. Sin has made us lose our dignity, our royal state as princesses and princes, and sin has made us slaves. God also addresses himself to us. We bring you a message of hope and assurance from God. God does not want us to die in sin. He wants to restore us. He wants to rebuild us. He wants to uplift us from a miserable state into which we find ourselves. Beloved, our sins have enslaved us, yet God is willing to rebuild and reconstruct us. This rebuilding and reconstruction can only take place in the church within the context of the sacrament of reconciliation. This is how God rebuilds us. When we go to the sacrament of confession, we are rebuilt, beloved. God reconstructs us. God rebuilds us through the sacrament of reconciliation. When we are destroyed and broken down by sin and cast away into slavery and captivity by the devil, God rebuilds us and restores us in the sacrament of confession. So if you do not go to the sacrament of confession, it means you refuse to be rebuilt. It means you prefer to remain in your broken state. Dear child of God, have you been destroyed by sin? 
Has the devil enslaved you? Has Satan taken you into captivity? Do you want to be rebuilt by God? Do you want to be restored to your former dignity and beauty? Then, go to the church. Go to the sacrament of reconciliation. Another way to have ourselves rebuilt is in conversion. Metanoia. Complete transformation. Beloved, when we are transformed and converted from our sinful life to life of grace in God, we become rebuilt. That is, old things are destroyed and put away and the new things are built. The story of our redemption is all about restoring our lost dignity, the honor and dignity we had at creation but lost through sin. The whole of Psalm 8 talks about this, particularly verse 5. God has made us little less than angels. With glory and honor, he has crowned us. He has put all things under our feet. We are created in the image and likeness of God. We are God's beloved. But sin has destroyed this dignity and honor. We have debased ourselves. When we sin, we lose this royalty and this dignity. Jesus came to restore us, to redeem us to our former beauty and dignity, stolen and destroyed by the devil and sin. That is the story of salvation. That is redemption. It is this restoration and redemption the prophet Jeremiah promises the people. The very essence, the very mission and the very work of the church is for salvation of souls, salus animarum. If the church is not out for the salvation of souls, then it has missed its mission. Canon 1752 says this is the very essence of the church, salvation of souls. And the church does this through the sacraments and through the preaching of the word of God. So dear friend, when you stay away from the church, you rather stay away from your restoration and you become lost. Look at what happened, for example, with the prodigal son. When he left home, it was like when he sinned. He lost his dignity as a son. He began to feed. He became a beggar, feeding from the food of pigs. But when he returned home to his father, his lost dignity was restored. He was returning home thinking he would be like one of the servants, but his father returned and restored him to his sonship. A gold ring was placed on his finger, recognizing his dignity and royalty as a son. Our churches, beloved, are our own homes, our true homeland. They are our own basilicas. Let us go to our own churches and find restoration. Heaven is a heavenly basilica. Let us return, beloved, to God through the church, and there we shall be rebuilt and we shall find salvation. Through the intercession of our Blessed Mother, let us always journey together with her. She is an example, a perfect paradigm of a disciple, and she teaches us how to be restored and how to go back to God and obey Him so that we can be rebuilt. O oh, dear Lord, sin has shattered us. The devil has destroyed us, but we come to you broken and on our knees. Restore us to the dignity of children of the house. When we go to the sacrament of confession, please, dear Lord, grant us your pardon and forgiveness and take us back to the dignity that is our due. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come on you and remain with you forever. Amen.